Okay, so moving on now, uh, we are going to go back again to our, well, I was going to say students, but they are now qualified pharmacists. They were students when they started this work. Uh, we're going to hear about the Planetary Health Report Card. So we're going to hear from Ellie Self and Dr. Ashley Lamb. So Elliot, uh, sorry, Ellie is a graduate of the University of Nottingham, um, now a qualified pharmacist at Nottingham University Hospital Trusts. Um, Ellie is the pharmacy lead for the Planetary Health Report Card Initiative. She is an advocate for sustainable pharmacy practice and healthcare, starting with integration of planetary health and sustainability into our pharmacy teaching. Dr. Ashley Lamb is a graduate of the University of Charleston School of Pharmacy in Charleston, the US. Um, Ashley is now a pharmacist at Beckley Veterans Affairs Medical Center. Ashley is a co-founder of RX for Climate. Um, planetary health is a passion of hers for many reasons, the most relevant being that planetary health and human health are directly intertwined. So Ellie and Ashley will present their work on implementing the first pharmacy pilot of the planetary health report card. The Planetary Health Report Card is a student-driven metric-based initiative to inspire planetary health and sustainable healthcare education engagement in pharmacy schools. So very much picking up from what Angela and Melissa um, were saying and, and building sustainability into the whole process from day one, from the bottom up. Okay, over to you, Ellie and Ashley. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for attending the Pharmacy Planetary Health Report Card session. Like, uh, like we talked about before, my name is Ashley. I'm based in the US, if you couldn't tell from my accent. And I'm a pharmacy resident at the Beckley Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Beckley, West Virginia. Um, and I'm Ellie, so I'm a newly qualified pharmacist uh, working at Nottingham University Hospitals. And we're here today to talk to you about the PHRC for pharmacy. This is a student-led initiative aimed at encouraging the inclusion of planetary health and sustainability in pharmacy school curricula and throughout the wider school institution. It was developed in medical schools and alongside an amazing team, we led the adaptation of the initiative to pharmacy with an international pilot that was launched on Earth Day, which was the 22nd of April earlier this year. So what is planetary health? I'm sure everyone here is familiar with the term as we've all elected to join this wonderful conference, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, planetary health is described by the Planetary Health Alliance as a solutions oriented transdisciplinary field and social movement focused on analyzing and addressing the impacts of human disruptions to earth's natural systems on human health and all life on earth. So this is a broad definition, but it is intended to encompass the multitude of ways in which the environment can affect health. The keyword there is of course health, and as healthcare professionals, we all know that it's imperative that we are aware of and act to improve upon health in all of its multifaceted determinants. So I'm sure we can all agree that our planet is in climate and ecological crisis. Increasing global temperatures are already causing extreme weather events like heat waves, droughts, and floods, as well as acute food and water scarcity, particularly in Africa, Asia, Central and South America, on small islands, and in the Arctic. Impacts of extreme weather and food and water scarcity impact health globally. So I would like to take a second here just to note that this is a crisis which disproportionately affects vulnerable populations, so there, these are inherently issues of equity and justice as well. Given all of this, it's unsurprising that the World Health Organization has called climate change the single biggest health threat facing humanity. In July, 2021, the concentration of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere was the highest it has been in human history. Linking that to health, greenhouse gas emissions contribute to more than 25% of global deaths from heart attacks, strokes, lung cancer, and chronic respiratory disease. Also, air pollution causes 7 million deaths per year, all while meter dose inhalers contribute 500 grams of CO2 per dose. In England, medicines account for a staggering 25% of NHS emissions, and in the US, prescription drugs account for 10% of the greenhouse gas, gases emitted by the US healthcare system at large. In April, the UN Environment Program 
stated that antimicrobials present in our water could increase the incidence of drug-resistant pathogens and potentially fuel another global pandemic. Therefore, although inhalers and antibiotics, just two examples, are both vital to improving our patients' outcomes, they also have a direct and detrimental impact for pharmacy on our patients. It's kind of a cyclical relationship, like the environment affects patients' health, but then the way that we take care of patients' health also has an impact on the environment. So this contradiction in patient care and the contribution from healthcare to the climate crisis must be addressed in our teaching and in our professional practice, which must be altered accordingly. However, until recently, this wasn't and often still isn't the case. Therefore, this emission, omission in patient care has sparked the beginning of the Planetary Health Report Card for Pharmacy. Um, so, as mentioned, uh, it was an initiative that was started in medicine. Um, so, before I describe the adaptation of the report card from medicine to pharmacy, uh, we thought we'd introduce some of the students involved in the PHRC for Pharmacy pilot, explaining what planetary health means to them. My name is Amelda, and I am a fourth year pharmacy student at the Skagg School of Pharmacy at the University of Montana. My name is Yohan Bjorn, and I'm a second year pharmacy student studying at the University of East Anglia. I'm Chelsea Kuiper. I'm a first year PhD student in public health at the University of Montana. Hi, and I'm Kyle Montgomery. I'm a fourth year uh, undergrad studying uh, cellular and molecular biology at the University of Montana. Um, to me, planetary health means mm, inclusivity and diversity within um, sustainable environment. Um, this crucial field is more than just environment, it's about people living in it. So from empowering um, those marginalized communities affected by um, climate threats to increasing um, sustainability in pharmacy practice, um, I was able to learn how closely related um, planetary health is to the um, health of humanity. So for me, planetary health really means the overall health of the planet that we inhabit, the Earth, um, and then how that relates to human health. Uh, they're uh, very closely intertwined, and um, really planetary health is just going to be an important part of ensuring future health of, of the generations moving forward. Our physical health and well-being are, are also tied to the health of the planet and vice versa. It wasn't until that I got involved in PHRC that I started to understand the importance of, of acknowledging the um, climate emergencies and the impact of rapidly changing environment on patients' health. The fact that it's a student-led project, and um, to me, I just think that anything that students initiate um, are the best for getting other students excited about things. Um, just thinking about what planetary health means, um, to me, I think of it as almost like a homeostasis of the planet. So, um, like a total sense of well-being, like if humans can live in a manner that is uh, ecologically responsible, ethical, and equitable, um, and we can eventually have like a state of balance across the entire planet, um, that would be the optimal state of planetary health. Um, so the adaptation of the Planetary Health Report Card from Medicine to Pharmacy uh, was initiated by myself and Dr. Alison Assels, um, who's the subject lead at the University of Huddersfield in the UK. So Alison set up meetings with the founder of this initiative, uh, Carly Hampshire, in America, and we began the conversation regarding adapting the initiative to pharmacy. So Alison and I began looking at the report card metrics. Um, we'll go into the metrics later, um, but basically they're quite similar to a questionnaire. And then we discussed on how to reflect the core principles of pharmacy education and professional pharmacy practice within those metrics. Um, I was then joined by our student leadership team. So we've got Ashley, who was a student at the time, um, Kayla, LaDon and Emma, and they're all based in America. And then Yiwon and myself are based in the UK. And then so together we reviewed and refined those metrics to ensure that they were relevant and applicable to pharmacy internationally. And this is something which Carly talked about as well when we were starting the adaptation, because it's really important that as the um, 
initiative grows within pharmacy that um, any pharmacy school in any country can use it and um, it applies to them as well. Um, and then once we'd finished the metrics, uh, they were reviewed again by pharmacy academics um, in the UK and America. And then we shared this with students in pharmacy schools to begin the pilot, the pilot of the planetary health report card for pharmacy. Uh, so on Earth Day, uh, the 22nd of April this year, we published a summary report from our pilot. And we're going to talk you through the report now. Um, so you can use the QR code or the website if you want to view it um, while we do that. So I'll just give you a moment. Rookie mistake, I was muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so just to start off, we're gonna go over some of the goals of the pharmacy PHRC pilot. The first was to assess the current level of planetary health and sustainability consideration and inclusion within pharmacy school education and wider institutions using the metrics as a needs assessment tool. We also wanted to encourage examples of planetary health and sustainability engagement and highlight opportunities for growth. And we wanted to build upon the international, interprofessional, and interinstitutional learning on planetary health and sustainable healthcare that was initiated by medical schools and also progress the global planetary health movement. So I mentioned metrics in the slide before, and we've kind of been mentioning them throughout the presentation. So you might be wondering what exactly these metrics are. The PHRC utilizes metrics in five different areas to highlight planetary health inclusion and consideration within the pharmacy school as well as the institution at large. So the first metric is the planetary health curriculum. This section evaluates the integration of planetary health topics into the existing curriculum. Pharmacists will be on the front lines of tackling and treating the health effects of climate and other environmental changes. Therefore, it's critical that pharmacy students understand planetary health issues and learn how to practice sustainably and reduce the environmental impact of medicines and medical devices. The second metric is planetary health research. This section evaluates the quality and quantity of planetary health research at the pharmacy school and within the wider institution. Planetary health is an emerging field, so to facilitate appropriate teaching on planetary health, pharmacy schools should support research in areas such as the health effects of climate change, adaptive measures, and the environmental impact of pharmacy. The next metric is community outreach and advocacy. This section evaluates pharmacy school engagement in community outreach and advocacy efforts associated with planetary health. Climate change disproportionately impacts under-resourced populations and communities of color. Therefore, it's critical that pharmacy schools and their institutions directly engage with communities most affected by environmental health harms and provide opportunities for student involvement. The next metric is support for student-led initiatives. So this section evaluates institutional support for student-led planetary health initiatives, such as quality improvement and information sharing. Since students are the future of the workforce and we tend to shape the future of pharmacy profession, it is vital that they are supported in engagement with emerging fields in healthcare such as planetary health. The final metric is campus sustainability. This section evaluates the support and engagement and sustainability by the pharmacy school and or the institution at, at large, considering aspects including carbon footprint and waste management. Our pharmacy schools and institutions must set the standard for sustainable practices, minimizing environmental impact. Um, so, as you know, this initiative was started in medical schools um, and the nature of a report card is that you achieve a grade at the end. Um, so we just wanted to run a quick poll to see your thoughts on the report card grades. So last year, 72 medical schools in seven different countries participated in the planetary health report card. Of those that participated, what percent of schools achieved a letter grade of C or less, do you think? So 20%, 50% or 80%? 
So the poll has been launched, so hopefully you can see a poll on your screens. So just pop in the answer and submit your poll. Lots of people answering that now, Ellie, so we'll give it a few more seconds. Okay, are you able to see it, Ellie? Uh, yeah, thank Great. you. So about 60% of people have answered. So we'll give it a few more seconds to get your answers in and then we'll see what people think. Okay, let's end the poll there and share the results. Can you see the results? Yeah, <laughs> um, so the majority of people think 50% um, achieve, achieved a grade a C or less. Um, thank you everyone for participating in that. Um, so actually, the answer was 80%. Um, so that's quite a high percentage. Uh, so obviously this shows that there's still progress to be made um, in this area. But the main thing that I wanted to emphasize from the poll is that um, participation in the PHRC isn't solely about the grade which you get. So for medical schools now, it's more a case of being involved in a forward thinking and innovative community of medical schools worldwide. Um, worldwide. And also more recently, it's about sharing ideas with colleagues as part of a multidisciplinary group uh, with pharmacy, nursing, and also hopefully soon um, dentists and physios. So actually being associated with the PHRC for medical schools um, enables them to show that they're doing great work to progress um, in planetary health. And it's kind of irrespective of the grade that they achieve. Obviously, you know, the grade shows what needs to be done, but there's more, more to it than the grade. Um, so we hope that the same will happen for pharmacy as we move forward with our report cards. So just to go over some of the details from the pharmacy results from our pilot, three pharmacy schools were published, the University of Montana Skegg School of Pharmacy, University of Charleston School of Pharmacy, which is my alma mater, and the Virginia Commonwealth University School of Pharmacy. So as you can see, our overall grades are displayed in this table alongside the grades for the individual metrics as well. Um, so from the information within the individual school report cards, uh, we've, we created some recommendations for pharmacy schools to consider. Um, and we did this by highlighting some of the great examples of work uh, which is already being done within the participating universities in America. Um, so the first recommendation was to link planetary health to clinical teaching. And as everyone knows, the pharmacy curriculum is already extremely full. So um, instead of creating new courses or classes, approaching clinical teaching uh, with planetary health as a common theme throughout uh, the core curriculum will allow sustainability to be ingrained in the pharmacy professional practice in the same way as antimicrobial stewardship or um, person-centered care. And that's something which Angela mentioned in her talk earlier as well. Um, and at the University of Montana, uh, the COPD learning module in the therapeutics course um, specifically highlights indoor and outdoor air pollution as possible causes of COPD. And then they cite information from the gold pocket guideline as part of this teaching. And then the second recommendation which we made was to link planetary health to clinical teaching using case studies. Um, so case studies are tools which inherently um, encompass a wide variety of um, considerations. Um, and so, this is a useful route to include planetary health considerations and then a way to facilitate learning on planetary health. And the University of Montana, um, they have a human health and climate change elective course, and that devotes one lecture to climate change and health communication. And then strategies for discussing the whys, whose, whats, whens and hows of climate change are shared and then applied to a patient case. So the next recommendation is to include teaching on waste management in the curriculum. Understanding pharmaceutical waste management is vital to reducing the environmental damage caused by pharmacy manufacturer provision and disposal of medications. Patient waste can include vials, devices, active metabolites or unchanged drugs, and more. Regulated medical waste and hazardous waste in the health system should also be discussed. And a good example of this is the pharmacy ethics lecture at the University of Montana, which discusses the environmental impact of the pharmaceutical life cycle. The next recommendation is to improve lab waste management and sustainability. Waste management should be considered in school labs where hazardous materials, energy usage, and single use plastics contribute to the negative impact that healthcare has on the environment. 
Waste management and sustainable labs are integral to sustainable pharmacy service provision and should be addressed in core curricula. Additionally, campuses should make efforts to make experiential labs more environmentally sustainable. For example, the University of Montana has a hazardous waste collection program. So used lab chemicals that are safe to reuse are distributed to other labs. Universal wastes like batteries and fluorescent lamps are recycled and departments are encouraged to purchase only the amount of chemicals necessary. Also, although not included in the PHRC pilot since 2019, the University of Reading has a lab efficiency assessment framework, which our last speaker actually touched on, um, but it's an independent standard that enables science labs to improve their sustainability and efficiency. Therefore, this just highlights the vast potential for international and interprofessional collaboration and idea sharing, which the PHRC has if universities like Reading were to be involved and consequently share their expertise in these areas. Um, so the next recommendation is to facilitate interprofessional and interdisciplinary collaboration. So as healthcare professionals, we work as part of a multidisciplinary team every day. So facilitating shared learning um, through elective courses or conferences uh, like this one, um, or talks from experts um, in planetary health and attending events and initiatives hosted by the wider institution will ultimately provide better care for our patients and then reduce the impact of health care on the environment. And at the University of Montana, the Climate Change and Human Health course um, and the Planetary Health Virtual Exchange focus on education for sustainable healthcare and planetary health education, and they're available to all the students on campus. And then uh, the next recommendation is to support student-led organisations and information sharing. Uh, the student voice is a powerful tool for change, and so supporting student-led organisations encourages enthusiasm and innovation in planetary health. And the Sustainable Pharmacy Project um, is the first organisation to gain recognition for bringing sustainability awareness in pharmacy in America. And it's a student created organisation actually created by two of our leadership team, um, LaDon and Kayla, and it was founded at Virginia Commonwealth University School of Pharmacy. So that's really exciting. The next recommendation is to include teaching on climate change and social inequality in the curriculum. Social inequality is inextricably linked to health inequality, and climate change exacerbates the existing burden of disease for vulnerable populations. So teaching on the social and environmental determinants of health must be included in core curricula to provide the knowledge and tools with which to overcome these barriers for our patients. It's known that populations most affected by poor climate are also most vulnerable to health disparity. Therefore, treating the patient is our utmost duty, and that will require taking into consideration our patient's environment. An example of this inclusion is shown at the University of Charleston, where the relationship between climate change and social determinants of health is addressed in a lecture presented in the Strategies for Positive Health Outcomes core course. The next recommendation is to provide community outreach and advocacy opportunity. We as healthcare professionals are trusted members of our communities and well-placed to advocate for our community's needs. Pharmacy students must have opportunities to work with local communities affected by climate change and to raise awareness as part of the pharmacy course, elective courses, or be able to access initiatives provided by the wider institution. The school's presence must be in symbiosis with its immediate community members. An awesome example of this is the Pease Farm, which is the University of Montana's campus and community farm where students and interns across many programs of study grow produce for the community as well as the local food bank. And then our final two recommendations were to include teaching on disaster preparedness in the curriculum. So as we all know, our planet is in crisis and we as pharmacy professionals must be equipped to provide care to our patients in the face of extreme weather events and natural disasters resulting from climate change. So therefore, it's imperative that we're made aware of such risks to global health and provided with the knowledge to adequately care for um, ourselves and our patients through these events. And we need to be taught that through uh, the core curriculum. So at the University of Montana, they have one lecture covering the concept of disaster ethics, and that highlights concepts such as resource stewardship and, res and rationing care. 
Um, it also has a public health lecture on pharmacy disaster preparedness, which illustrates the impact of Superstorm Sandy um, and the impact that that had on pharmacy operations. And then the final recommendation is to um, fund faculty in planetary health. Now, we're very aware that money doesn't grow on trees, <laughs> but this is really important because providing teaching on planetary health and sustainability requires research to be carried out and underpin such knowledge. Um, pharmacy schools and wider institutions must provide support and funding for planetary health research, as well as um, faculty members who are experts in this area. Um, and there are two really great um, examples of faculty members such as these in our report card. Um, so there's Hayley Blackburn um, from the University of Montana and then Alice um, Garbauer at the University of Charleston. And they're both environmental pharmacy champions at their respective universities. And they've been working to incorporate planetary health topics into their school's curricula. But they do this um, as you know, many people here do, in addition to their primary teaching, mentoring, committee and clinical practice responsibilities. So as with everything, there were some limitations that we experienced during our pilot. The biggest one was probably limited representation of schools. So there were initially 10 pharmacy schools who expressed interest in the PHRC for pharmacy, but in order to publish the report card on Earth Day, there were some short deadlines um, required to complete the metrics. Understandably, there were a couple of schools who could not meet those deadlines. And also other schools completed the metrics, but then experienced resistance from their pharmacy school administrations, meaning that unfortunately they were not able to publish. This was probably due to a lack of awareness from faculty about the initiative, as well as fear of bad press. But like Ellie and I stressed earlier, um, this initiative is not to display schools in a bad light, but rather to highlight the need for planetary health inclusion and consideration and to encourage and inspire sustainability by highlighting great examples, such as those that we discussed. As the years go on and as more schools are involved in the initiative, as they are in medical schools, we don't anticipate this being a continual barrier to publication in the future. Um, so where next? <laughs> we have big plans for the future. Um, following our pilot, we believe we have built the foundations to enable us to roll the planetary health report card for pharmacy um, out on a large scale. So we aim to enhance our global presence um, through involving universities around the world this year. And we've already got a lot more universities signed up to participate this year, which is great. Uh, there's actually an orientation happening this afternoon um, with colleagues from medicine and nursing. So that would be a really exciting multidisciplinary event. Um, we've been working on clarifying uh, the metric examples um, and then that will mitigate discrepancies in metric interpretation. Uh, so we've now provided pharmacy specific examples to support the metrics and help with filling them in, uh, which we weren't able to do before the pilot. Um, and as Ashley mentioned, there was some resistance to publication, so we'd like to increase involvement of um, faculty with an interest in this area to support students um, with their report card. Um, so just a bit of an advert now, um, if anyone is interested and wants to get involved, um, please reach out to our um, email address or you can get in touch via the website. Um, as I said, there's an orientation happening this afternoon, um, but you haven't missed it. It's not too late. Um, you can still join um, and we can share the resources from that orientation. Um, and so we just wanted to finish our talk by saying that obviously the climate crisis is undoubtedly scary, uh, but there is hope. So in her introduction, um, Nula described the amount of progress which has been made in the past year um, since the first Pharmacy Declares conference. And the Planetary Health Report Card is facilitating multidisciplinary collaboration between medical schools, pharmacy and nursing, and then hopefully physio and dentists as well. And that's um, people all around the world. And in medical schools, the response from institutions is one of the biggest impacts of the report card, which is what we hope for. So universities have set up sustainability working groups in medical schools as a direct result of the Planetary Health Report Card. So it's unsurprising that 78% of medical schools improved their grade um, from the previous year. And it just shows how much can be achieved um, when we work together. So, um, any questions? 
Wow, Ellie and Ashley, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to echo what some people are saying in the comments and um, that you're doing such inspirational work. And can I just say, you guys have done this alongside your pharmacy degree. So that is amazing. <laughs> well done. And um, a few really quick questions because we're nearly out of time. So Nicola's asking the orientation that you're talking about happening later today. Um, is that going to be recorded and made available so that we can play it to prospective student champions? Any ideas? Yeah. <laughs> so will that be available on the PHRC website? Um, not sure actually. Um, okay. But if anyone wants it, then you could email and we can share it from there. I, I imagine it will, but not hundred percent. Okay. So maybe if you just, I know you just had the email on your slide, but if you maybe just pop that in the chat box afterwards, Ellie, just so people can access it again, that would be great. Jennifer is asking if your international outreach includes non-English language speaking universities. Um, right now, we are working on recruiting um, to any country, um, any language. Um, the medical school PHRC does include non-English speaking um, universities, but if you are in contact with one or you are at a non-English speaking university and would like to be involved, please reach out. We would love to have you. Right. I think you just want everybody to get involved, don't you? Yes, so can I just ask your examples of um, published report cards at the moment are all in the US. Are there any kind of plans coming out in the UK? Um, yeah, we have a few UK universities signed up, um, which is good. And hopefully more um, will be signing up. Yeah, right. we've just got America and the UK at the moment. <laughs> but... Okay. So all of the audience out there, if you're um, pharmacy undergraduates, get in touch with Ellie and Ashley, get your universities involved. It's obviously a fantastic comprehensive tool for looking at the whole bigger picture around sustainability. So I think, I think, it's, I think it's just brilliant work. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so um, time for another um, short break. Uh, we're just going to have a quick 10 minute break before we move on to our final session. So it's 12.30 now, uh, we will come back at 12.40. Thank you.